happen. We have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to the post Super Bowl edition of Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. <laughs> I'm Ann Northrup. Uh, we do have a lot of gay news for you this week. A federal appeals court won't stop same sex marriages from going forward in Alabama on February 9th. Of course, we haven't heard from the Supreme Court yet. There's still a chance they could stop them, but things are looking pretty good. And things are looking uh, good from President Obama, who is proposing in his budget proposal, I guess, that Social Security actually cover the entire country in benefits for married gay people. What a concept. Uh, the Republican chair of the U.S. House's subcommittee on human rights says that LGBT rights are not human rights. He's a bad guy from way back. Naughty. There is progress on a couple of legislative issues in Virginia. But regress in Indiana. And if you're wondering whether we're going to get to the Bruce Jenner story, we are in the context of how it is probably never too late to come out. Uh, in uh, Sao Paulo, they've launched a new way to help transgender kids, and I hope it catches on. Yeah, it's kind of sweet. The Massachusetts Department of <coughs> Health says why HIV rates are lower in the Commonwealth. And we'll show you a couple of movie trailers of movies opening in New York and around the country this week. But we start in Alabama, uh, and the, the big news in that case, a marriage case, was that the 11th Circuit declined, as they did in the Florida case, uh, to issue a stay of the ruling well, of the judge. To extend the stay. Yeah. There was a stay in place for a couple of weeks. It runs out Monday the 9th. Marriages are scheduled to start then. The attorney general of uh, Alabama went to the 11th Circuit and said, please extend the stay. Let's keep this in place. Let's not let marriages happen until the Supreme Court makes its decision in the four cases it's taking. It'll be too confusing. It'll, it'll upset people if we go back and forth. Uh, and the judge, the trial judge in the case, or the, uh, the judge of origin in the case, also said, uh, I'm not going to lift the stay before February 9th. Yes. So, uh, so they have appealed to the Supreme Court, and it lands in the lap of none other than Clarence <laughs> Thomas. Uh, now, you're telling me that one judge can, um, on his or her own, can stop this? I believe so. I hope you'll correct me if I'm wrong. But what I think is more important is that the Supreme Court these days is not extending stays. Even before... Uh, they or even after they have agreed to take these cases from Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky, and Tennessee, they ha they have not bought into that right. argument that things should not go forward as they go through their process. So I uh, will see what happens by the time you see this, but it looks like marriages can start in Alabama on Monday the 9th and be performed by all the judges there. There was also the question that had arisen in Florida about does the ruling in favor of same-sex marriage apply just to those who brought the cases or does it apply to the whole state? And the probate judges there have now agreed that it does apply to the whole state and so they are prepared to go ahead and issue licenses and perform marriages. And if it goes forward, they're gonna have wedding week. <laughs> Free marriage ceremonies uh, uh, the week of February 9th when the stay expires in Huntsville. Uh, that's because, uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, people who don't want to perform them. And, uh, A couple of judges there who've said, I, I'm too busy, I can't do this, I don't have time, my calendar is very full, so I'm not going to be performing any marriages because they at least have gotten the message that they cannot discriminate. So people are setting up wedding ceremonies in the courthouse square in Huntsville for uh, the week of the night. I hope and they have nice weather. Yeah. <laughs> now, the out 
lesbian legislator there, Patricia Todd, uh, who threatened to expose the family values colleagues uh, of her, if, the, if, if, they, if she knew them or to be maritally unfaithful, has herself been threatened with death. So she's getting more police protection, and she says they're not going to make scare me back into my house. She's been threatened and abused for many, many years as the only out legislator in Alabama. She's done a fantastic job for years of first running for office and, as we showed you in her quote last year on tape, at, serving as an activist, not a standard politician. So I don't think these threats are anything new to her, and I think she's a brave forthright yes. person with good values who is happy to stand up for that. Now, we very much appreciate one of the plaintiffs in this case, Carrie uh, Searcy, uh, standing up for herself and fighting for her right to marry. But it emerges now that she helped create campaign ads in 2012 for Judge Roy Moore. Uh -oh. He's the bad guy uh, uh, and uh, who, very was, bad who guy. was trying to stop same-sex marriage and defy the Constitution and all this kind of stuff. So Carrie said... I struggled whether to take this job. <laughs> you didn't struggle hard enough, Carrie. No. You shouldn't have done it. I don't think Patricia J Todd would have taken that job. <laughs> oh, man. So as this continues to play out in Alabama, Freedom to Marry, Evan Wolfson's organization, has put together a 30-second spot to sort of a TV ad to help the people of Alabama get a little more used to this. Soften them up get with the program and they're running they ran it around the Sunday news talk show spent a lot of money weekend yes and they're running it for several days in various places and you'd say well what's the deal they got marriage what's the problem as you can see in a lot of these cases that doesn't just flip a switch that makes everybody get on board you still need to explain things to people and get them to see that these are human beings who simply want to live their lives so we are going to show you the Freedom to Marry ad that is running in Alabama. I can't imagine anyone loving a person as much as I love my wife. Alabama does not recognize our marriage. Everyone wants to believe that if you do what you're supposed to do, your family will be taken care of. But we don't have that safeguard that every child can feel good about the home they come from. Isn't that what matters? was all families deserve respect. I think at this point I would have preferred a message that says Alabama has decided they will respect our marriage <laughs> and we think everybody should respect us and get on board with that. Right. Well, whatever. And a, an interesting decision in Gresham, Oregon, where the uh, bakery, what is it? Sweet, Sweet Cakes by Melissa. Has been found guilty of discriminating against a lesbian couple by refusing to provide them a wedding cake. This was a ruling by the Oregon uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries. And now the fine is going to be set on March 10th. Everybody's getting all excited because these fines can go up to 150000 it won't be $150,000. Uh, now, the bakery is already closed. It closed on in December 2013 after the backlash, mm -hmm. and the owner is now baking cakes from home mm -hmm. now. Which evidently doesn't have the same public accommodations rules. In the Eighth Circuit, which is the North Dakota, South Dakota, Missouri, Arkansas, Nebraska maybe is in that yes. too. They are going, they've scheduled oral arguments. They've scheduled briefing schedules and oral arguments in May on the cases from Arkansas, Missouri, and South Dakota. So we are continuing to reduce the list of yes. circuits. The, that... the hearing will be in Omaha. <laughs> But and the, uh, and it will be after uh, the Supreme Court has heard oral arguments yes. in their cases. They won't have a decision yet, but they will have heard oral arguments. But these circuits are continuing. They're moving ahead, and that's great. A little footnote in Virginia, where they have same-sex marriage now, uh, the state has to pay $520,000 to lawyers for the gay plaintiffs in the case, including $450,000 alone to Ted Olson's firm. The price of bigotry. They've been quite 
uh, successful at getting paid for these cases. Well, they asked for a lot more. They asked for a million, <laughs> but they got several million in California from contributions. The ACLU and Lambda and NCLR take these cases, and they don't uh, get any of this special money. Well, and there was a big story this week about how some of the private lawyers for the cases that weren't brought by Michigan. the big Michigan. Right, by, by the big The groups. chief lawyer in Michigan is complaining about not getting Dana money. Nessel. Perhaps she should apply to the state for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, well she's saying it's going to cost. She's one of the cases going to the Supreme Court. And they say that taking a case to the Supreme Court costs a million dollars to litigate. And then people say, a million dollars? You have to Xerox some papers and you have to get on a plane to Washington. What's the big deal? But then uh, upon further examination, she admitted that she, in fact, had gotten quite a bit of help on the case all along from Lambda Legal, from the GLAD people in Boston, gay and lesbian advocates and defenders. And no, they hadn't been turned down by every right. organization. But it's also true that one of the reasons they've gotten this far is because these organizations were fighting the other cases in the other jurisdictions. Well, and it all plays yes. together. And, this and having been turned down down for representation by Lambda in yes. my St. Patrick's Cathedral case, I know that they don't take every case. Right, they take precedent-setting cases. That's their thing. But the, the thing is, this started out in Michigan as just, a, not just, but it was an adoption case to a yes. same-sex marriage case. Yes. And then the judge said, oh, for, God, for God's sakes, I'm going to give you the right to adopt this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna a marriage off. case. It's the marriage thing. But the, her story was that the national legal organizations, the LGBT ones, didn't want to take the case because they didn't see it as a winner. And they certainly do make those kinds of assessments as they go along. But then the point is, they go off to the other states, they do win cases, and it builds the whole momentum and the rationale that helped her win the case yes. in Michigan. Yes. Uh, another and then lose it at the Sixth another Circuit. Another case of a service provider who had a reversal. This is in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, this is called the Gortz House Gallery. Uh, they were told that they can't discriminate against uh, uh, same-sex couples who want to have their weddings or those kinds of things there. So they got to pay a $5,000 fine. But now they say, uh, we just won't host any weddings or receptions because we have to uphold the our religious principles. The whole industry is shutting down. <laughs> For fear of having to work with us. That's not true, but some are being knocked out. Uh, and the 11th Circuit will continue to hear these cases from Georgia and Florida and Alabama, so things are moving ahead in that circuit, No, they're still too. trying to repeal DOMA in the Congress, and they have 126 co-sponsors on the bill in the House. They added their third Republican House member, uh, who, uh, to the repeal. He's from Illinois, Representative Robert Dold, D-O-L-D. I assume this is about the clause that was not overturned by the Supreme yes. Court that said states do not have to recognize marriages performed yes. in other states. And those who are on our side want to repeal all of DOMA, but yeah. mostly because of that, so that states no longer have that as now, a defense. No, we've been complaining that things are not fair for a lot of same-sex couples from the Social Security Administration. If you live in a state that doesn't recognize same-sex marriage, they don't want to give you spousal benefits. Even if you are legally married in another state. Right. So they, It's the question of... Do, is are the Social Security federal benefits based on where the mar marriage was celebrated or where you are domiciled. Yeah, right. And this is about DOMA because uh, you get any Social Security benefits because of the Windsor case and the Supreme Court overturning of DOMA and mandating that federal benefits must go to same-sex legally married couples. So the president removed the barrier to this in his budget. Now the question well, is what's, proposing to what's gonna it. happen in the budget uh, with the Republican Congress. Are they gonna notice this? There's some dispute over, you know, when this first came up, the Social Security Administration said, well, our regulations say we can only recognize marriages by where you're domiciled, not where they were celebrated. And people said, well, you could change that regulation. And so now Obama's proposing to change it in legislation. There are people who say, you know, you really don't have to go that route. You could do it yourself. So that's still a question. And the other little sticking point here is that the Veterans Administration right. also 
supplies benefits only based on where you live, not where your marriage was celebrated. And that uh, change is not proposed in this hmm. budget. So he's proposing to make the change for Social Security survivor benefits or whatever, but not for veterans benefits and yet. I don't mean to jump on to uh, AIDS news, but since we're talking about the budget, uh, funding for AIDS is basically level in this budget, but the AIDS groups seem content with that. Well, I'm going to I'm going to amend that a little. Uh, funding is up a little in, in some the proposal categories. for US uh, uh, AIDS care and support and education but down in the international proposal, and people are really unhappy about that, all this talk about ending the AIDS epidemic right. by really encouraging people to get tested and get treated, and then you're cutting the funds that would help people get yeah. tested and treated. Now, we don't like to spend a lot of time quoting the crazy things that right-wingers say all the time, because there's so many, and you know, many of you send me these things constantly, <laughs> and I appreciate them, I like to review them, but we will, I want to cite a couple of them. There's an alliance of right-wing Catholics and evangelicals that issued a statement in the journal First Things saying, same-sex marriage is a worse threat than divorce or cohabitation. They call it a parody of marriage, and the signers include such, uh, uh, I have scum here, she's a, a person, uh, as Maggie Gallagher. And, and, then and a there's, lot of others. And then there's Mike Huckabee. Uh, you probably heard about this. He, he's, uh, he said, asking a Christian merchant to accept a same-sex marriage in the course of business is like asking someone Jewish to start serving bacon-wrapped shrimp in their deli. Uh, he also compared being gay to drinking and swearing. And he said he has gay friends. Well, but the American Family Association, which has been one of the worst offenders in fighting us, has sort of fired Brian Fisher as their one of their spokes models. This guy's a wacko, and he does their radio show, and he's still and doing their radio exactly. show. Exactly. Uh, but. Uh, they, they got embarrassed, and Rachel Maddow is the one who sort of brought this story to light. Uh, the AFA, the American Family Association, apparently funding, probably, I shouldn't say, probably through Sheldon Adelson or somebody like that, this big junket to Israel for all these Republicans. It's an AFA-sponsored event. And the, an official Republican event, yes. more disturbingly. So they got upset about some of, uh, we, you know, we've talked about Brian Fisher before, but in relationship to this, he, uh, you know, he said things like, um, oh, and the AFA says they reject Fisher's claims that the free exercise of religion only belongs to Christians and that mosques should not be allowed, that the violent expulsion of Native Americans was divinely ordained because of their savagery and sexual immorality, right. and that homosexuality gave us Hitler. <laughs> So this is the kind of stuff that made them nervous at the over at Republican headquarters. Uh, I frankly am shocked that the <laughs> AFA is at all distancing itself from Brian they're Fisher. They're just saying he's not a spokesperson, <laughs> but they're giving him a radio show. He's still on the air like five days a week. Yeah. <laughs> but the connection to the Republicans is truly shocking. But maybe not when one of the Republicans is New Jersey Representative Chris Smith, previously famous <laughs> mostly for his anti-abortion work. Uh, but now he, as the Republicans are in charge in the House and the Senate, he runs the, what's the committee he it's runs? It's the Subcommittee on Human right, Rights. This is, you know, Subcommittee on Human Rights in the uh, Congress. So he's talking about human rights in some interview, and he says, homosexual rights are not human rights. <laughs> Cut this us? Is, this Do is, we not bleed? This is the congressional head of a subcommittee. I mean, I, I, they ought to be awfully, I, we ought to put a lot of them on the split. That ought to be the question of the day for all the Republican leaders. Are gay rights human rights? I, I think you'd get a lot of tongue-tied Republicans. Yeah, but I think the story we really need to get to is Bruce Jenner. All right. Bruce Jenner, 66 years old, has been talked about for months as potentially transitioning. Yep. Uh, going through gender reassignment or confirmation, uh, living life as a woman. This has been rumored, there have been endless pictures about his painted fingernails, his longer hair, lipstick. his lipstick, the whole bit. 
And now it turns out that it seems to be true that he is signed up for an e-reality series doing this that's been filming for a couple of weeks already. He is apparently going to confirm it in an interview with Diane Sawyer on during, ABC. During Sweeps Month they still in have May. That. They still have Sweeps <laughs> yes, Month. Yes, they do. They thought every day was Sweeps Month these yes. days. Yes. Uh, anyway, his 88-year-old mother said... I'm more proud of him now than when he put that gold medal around his neck. And that was back in the mid-70s, right? When at the y Olympics. Yes. And uh, I, I, in the course of doing the story, you read that he was uh, on the most successful Wheaties box of all time. Still. Yeah. Still the most successful. And there are now, uh, you know, the tabloid press, the mainstream press, everybody is all over this. They're talking about... Uh, he was cross-dressing before he married Kris Jenner, and he told her he wanted to transition, and she said, oh, forget it, we're getting married, and she's been in denial all along and isn't really uh, on board with this, and the kids are much better and okay. But as all this conversation goes on, we're on many... LGBT discussion lists on email and stuff, and there has been a lot of disgruntlement on those lists from LGBT leaders, uh, trans and non-trans, saying, how dare the press be discussing this? Bruce has not made any announcement. Bruce, by the way, there I, I read one mention that uh, the new name is Caitlin. Oh, I thought it was Christy. Oh, is that what you read? I know uh, that's what I was told today, but it, maybe it is Caitlin. I don't know. So was it, we'll, but he was married we'll find to a Chris, out. right? Yes, so and we will. That find would be out. confusing. We will find out eventually, and we should uh, figure out whether to call pronouns. Uh, yes, him or her. But this, these LGBT leaders are appalled that this is being discussed publicly. Bruce has not made his own announcement yet. How dare we discuss this? How dare the press discuss this? His mother discussed it. His, everybody's discussing it, and you should be grateful that this is being discussed because it's being discussed in a very supportive manner yeah. by all these press outlets. Wendy Williams goes on her show and says how proud she is of him, and it is certainly bringing out a lot of bad comments in comments sections on blogs and yeah. stuff. But it is getting the conversation out there. This is a prominent celebrity right. who is doing this publicly. And uh, and to say, uh, you know, this is a bad image because he hasn't made an announcement but yet. Is, but isn't he talking about turning it into his own reality show? Yes. Yeah. And making money off yes. of it and controlling the, the scheduling that way. So I'm very appalled by the LGBT leaders who yes. are saying, we're not talking about this until he does. Well, you're missing an opportunity. If you, At the very least, if you don't like the way it's being handled, then talk about that. Well, you know, But that... to sit there with your head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend this isn't happening right. when it is uh, one of the top stories in the news all over the country is ridiculous. Well, you know, last week we talked about Joel Gray's official coming out at 82, and this mm -hmm. is the other older person who's who apparently has officially come out. Uh, you know, his quote was, if you have to put a label on it, I'm a gay man. Well, I mean, we did know him as gay forever. Ever. I mean, we know him. I yes. mean, I mean, so like we never felt any compunction. We never thought he was in the closet. Yeah. I mean, I realized that he was married to a woman for a while and, he, and that kind of stuff. Um, and he's done lots for gay and AIDS causes. Um, so I don't quite understand. Uh, I, I, I don't quite get what he's doing here, but for him, it means I, something. I guess it's uh, something about age, but it's it's weird. Maybe he wants to get married. Uh, I have a, a digression since we mentioned sure. Bruce Jenner doing the interview with Diane Sawyer, presumably on ABC. Yes. Because I saw a, a misstep by the idiotic closet case David Muir now doing World News Tonight. Is he, is he officially in the closet? I think so. <laughs> okay. What did he do? <laughs> well, this is the host of ABC he's News. He's doing the Harper Lee uh, To Kill a Mockingbird sequel book story. And, you know, about Atticus Finch and his daughter Scout and the, uh, the everybody else. The sequel that was written before the... Uh, before the original book, 20 years later. And so David Muir sits there and reads off the teleprompter, I guess, with no prior preparation. And so we are now going to find out what happens to the little girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the most read book in the in the world. I think this is what happens when you're in the closet. You're an idiot. <laughs> Is Harper Lee a lesbian? I always wondered, and you know, she was very, very close to Truman Capote, yeah, see, but I have no evidence on that, we, so I am not claiming that. And we talk like this in the show because there's nothing wrong with it. Exactly. Uh, nothing wrong with it. And we're proud of Bruce Jenner for transitioning yes. in public. And, you know. And proud of the news organizations that are supportive of that. Okay. So that's us. Some other, uh, you know, the, the big news, on, and, it's, and it's all related to the marriage thing. is Wait. Uh, we're not proud of Katy Perry. No. Who at brought the Super Bowl. Lenny Kravitz on stage at the Super Bowl <laughs> for a minute to sing I Kissed a Girl with her so that they could sort of uh, make it palatable for the Super Bowl Which usually audience. involves a girl kissing a girl, right? Not at the Super Bowl. But it usually does, right? Well, she doesn't actually kiss a girl, I think, yeah. when she sings the song, but she sings the song as a girl kissing a well, girl. They, but they try then, to make it look semi-provocative, but uh, boy, no. a lot of people watch the Super Bowl thing, don't they? <laughs> More than anything else in the history of the but world. But even this one was seen by more people than any uh, in, Ever. The past, uh, in the past. That's what I'm saying. Which is uh, with all the other options that you have. <laughs> Just to annoy the Super Bowl party people I was with, I said at one point, oh, time for Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch Down Abbey, but I watched it on the DVR. I mean, Me I had too. the thing on. I was, I, I was home alone, as yeah. they say. I, it's my day for oh. doing my tax receipts. No. I say I'm going to put the game on in the background. I, that's the first time I usually find out who's playing. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, I knew. Uh, all right. So, uh, interesting case out of California. The California Supreme Court, fairly liberal court, ruled five to two that sex offender registration law does not violate the equal protection when it, when it uh, gives courts discretion on whether to impose mandatory registration on adults who have vaginal intercourse with someone 16 or 17. But, but mandates it for oral or anal sex. The discretion comes from the fact that vaginal sex can lead to pregnancy, and if you made them a sex offender, you would stigmatize the father as a sex offender. I had never heard this rationale Where before. Where have we heard this kind of reasoning before? Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. It's still too complicated. Exxon Mobil has finally, after many, many, many years of pressure, added an explicit sexual orientation, gender identity, non-discrimination clause to their non-discrimination regulations. They did it for a couple of reasons. Yes. One, because the federal government now has this contractor's so regulation, it. so if they want federal contracts, they have to say explicitly. Uh, and it's federal by way of an Obama executive order. Correct. Uh, also, they are under attack by the Freedom to Work organization, which did one of these testing things where they sent them a lot of resumes, some gay-specific, some not, but paired resumes, and they, of course, offered interviews to all the non-gay people. And, and the, the Illinois Department of Human Rights has ruled that there is a substantial evidence that ExxonMobil discriminated. Yeah. So they have finally done that. I think they agreed to give benefits uh, some time ago to partners of employees, same-sex partners of employees, but this is the first explicit non-discrimination regulation. And in Virginia, the Senate there has passed a non-discrimination law that will cover state and local government employees. Yep. Uh, and they also approved a measure to add gender-neutral references to the state's marriage laws, which have obviously changed under the thing. Well, it's the kind of thing that Mike Huckabee is talking about. Mike Huckabee wants states to engage in nullification by not changing their laws when same-sex marriage is legalized in their states. I don't know if they actually have to, but uh, many states, when they are subject to those kinds of federal decisions, will conform their laws. But they also killed a conscience clause bill that would let businesses discriminate based on religious belief. And we should talk about all these religious freedom laws because they're popping up like topsy. So Virginia, they killed them, killed it. And that's uh, encouraging. But North Carolina has introduced such a bill and Indiana's Senate has passed it. Thir 39 to 11, 
to let, now listen to this, to let state contracts go to entities that discriminate in hiring and employment uh, based on religion. Now, the current law forbids religious discrimination by, by contractors. And s s you So know. the real question is, as states pass these religious freedom or religious exemption laws, will they ultimately be declared unconstitutional? Well, but this is, see, this, this is, you know, there's some of them just say this is all to let private businesses invoke their religion. Right. Uh, but this is a matter of state money going to these groups that do this. Now, uh, we have a lot of these contracts in New York. They all, you know, very conservative religious and Catholic groups get these contracts. They all sign something saying, in the, in the, in the execution of this contract, mm -hmm. we won't discriminate in hiring, we won't discriminate against any clients. I don't think it's been put to the test. Maybe Freedom to Work would like to come in and do some work on that. Mm. But, you know, for instance, in Kentucky, they pull tax breaks from the Ark Encounter Museum, which is run by creationists, because it discriminates in hiring based on religion. So, uh, they're suing in federal court to get $18 million in tax breaks. They're probably already a tax-exempt organization. Now they want $18 million in tax breaks. This is your money, folks. Special rights. Right. And I'm sad to report that in Idaho, the, not unexpected, the legislature has killed the proposed non-discrimination law, the add four words proposal. Well, didn't, didn't the governor there, Butch Otter, who was against same-sex marriage, say that he could support the bill? Well, whether he could or not, the <laughs> legislature has killed I, it. I know. But the big step forward was that they actually got a hearing, which was which was a step forward. Because 20 hours didn't... of testimony, Yeah. but they killed it 13 to 4. It's all a step forward. Yep. And a small step forward. The we Navy... had a lot of losses in New York City before we ever passed it. We probably yes. lost about 10 times. Yeah. The U.S. Navy has granted a transgender veteran the opportunity to change her name and her records. The Army has already done that for several people, but this is the first case in the Navy. And this, does, this is still not about allowing open transgender service. No, no, no. This is, but this still is working uh, on that. name changes for veterans. Uh, in, oh, also along the religious freedom thing, the crazy representative Sally Kern there in Oklahoma actually yeah. withdrew one of her anti-gay bills because she said it wouldn't have the intended effect, yeah. the nasty effect that I wanted, which exactly. is to provide immunity from civil liability to businesses that refused a product or a service to a gay. You have to be a little more careful in writing these she things, She still Sally. wants to authorize conversion therapy and punish state workers that punish state workers that issue same-sex marriage licenses. Yeah. All right, Some Sally. sad uh, cases of violence, yes. particularly intimate partner violence in Atlanta. Ashley Bell, 22 years old, shot dead by her girlfriend, Laura Bozeman, also 22. In L.A., uh, transgender uh, Yasmin Vosh Payne, 33 years old, stabbed dead by her boyfriend. Ezekiel Jamal Deer, 25. Uh, he turned himself in. He's being held on a million dollars bail. The neighbors heard frequent arguing. And in the Bronx, uh, in University Heights, Jocelyn Diaz, a trans uh, woman, was attacked by a group of men with a bat who broke her arm. It is being investigated as a hate crime. Yeah. Uh, All right. Anything else? There. Moving and, on to international and, and, news. Well, and Andrew Sullivan's retiring as a blogger. He wants to get back to real life. Uh, we all move on. Oh, and, and the, the trial has begun over the Houston LGBT rights ordinance. The anti-gay <laughs> groups there are fighting to fight to the legal death, uh, but they, you know, we're saying that there was rampant fraud on the petitions. Okay. okay. In international news, in Poland, we have a transgender woman running for president of Poland. Uh, it's, she's not going to win, but she is considered a, you know, a respected yeah. candidate running, I think, on an alternate party ticket. You never know. We'll follow her progress. Never know. In, uh, where are we? Egypt. In, yes. Well... A transgender woman convicted of debauchery, the favorite law in Egypt. You may remember the guys a picture uh, of her. arrested in the bathhouse were acquitted, but 
this woman is going to jail for six years for posting pictures on the internet and, and videos and, and things. YouTube videos. And right, 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 right. Six years in prison. Well, better news from the Dominican Republic, where LGBT advocates and the government and the travel industry are launching a campaign to promote LGBT tourism and rights there. And out U.S. Ambassador Wally Brewster's husband, Bob Sadawaki, is keynoting the launch. Uh, it's not a crime there, by the way, in the Dominican Republic to practice homosexuality, <laughs> unlike much of the Caribbean. Just looked down upon well, uh, by right. the Catholic uh, archbishops. Cute news from Russia, where a lesbian couple got on a plane and realized that sitting directly behind them was Vitaly Milanov, the author of the anti-gay Russian propaganda law. So they took a selfie, which you can see on the screen. They're lesbian activists, and they started kissing, and he's over there in the corner. And what's he doing? He's working on a bill to close a loophole in the Russian law that might allow uh, same-sex marriage, I guess in transgender <laughs> cases, right? Or something like that? Uh, whatever. Yeah. He's up to no good all the time. Oh, but their a... friends were sitting beside them laughing at the fact that uh, they were kissing and taking the selfie. It was uh, cute. And nothing bad happened to them on the plane. In Canada, they're going to get the second out-provincial premier, the liberal leader there, Wade McLaughlin uh, of Prince Edward Island. Uh, this, is, this hasn't happened yet, but it's, it's going to happen. Uh, but it's significant because Prince Edward Island is considered about the most conservative uh, province Tiny in Canada. Tiny province. And if the Labour Party resumes power in Britain, we may see mandatory LGBT education in the schools. Got a because picture of the kids there. That is part of their official platform. So yes, there is a picture of kids uh, holding up little rainbow signs. It's going to make there it compulsory go. to tackle homophobic bullying. Keep calm and be proud, the signs say. Mandatory sex education. So this may push some of the other parties to have to take a stand on this issue. You're such an optimist, Andy. <laughs> in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, uh, a really heartwarming scheme. The government there wants to keep trans students away from street prostitution and get them to stay in school and study. And Finish their education. Yes, so they're paying them to stay in school, giving them monthly stipends. No, they're uh, going to start with a hundred. Hundred people. Th three hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, th yeah three hundred twenty-five dollars, roughly, a, a month. Uh, to, if they attend middle or high school 30 hours a week. And I, I think, I it's, think a, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea because they, they need it for survival. I mean, we work with homeless kids here in New York trying to keep them in school, but they're trying to survive on the streets. And didn't Bloomberg have a, have a program at one point of uh, paying poor kids yeah, to go to school? Poor kids, yes. Not, but yeah, not particularly for, especially for these transgender no, kids. No, no, no. Like poor that. kids. I'm not sure I've seen any follow up on that. <clears throat> no. In France, a court has okayed the marriage of a French Moroccan same sex couple. They had previously barred. Uh, citizens of several countries from entering into same-sex marriages. Yeah. Uh, th this is some wrinkle in the law because it's like considered a problem in these places and they include Morocco, Poland, and Laos and eight others. Uh, but now it looks like that's going to go by the wayside. Uh, in the United Kingdom, the the uh, the imitation game is up for, for the Oscar uh, yeah. and Harvey Weinstein's got this big campaign. So they were he, he certainly were, does. Ask, they've been asking I for, don't think he's going to be very successful no. with it. No, I like the movie. But they're asking for pardons for all 49,000 men convicted of buggery uh, in the past, like Alan Turing was. So the star of the film, Benedict Cumberbatch, and out gay actor Stephen Fry, wrote to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, that's Prince William and Kate, to get behind the campaign. And their spokesman had to say to them, this is a matter for government, not us. You know, we're not allowed to take stands on things like this. Heaven forbid. And there are so many other things that we could be correcting from. How about reparations for slavery? If you want to do something big. That'd be nice. Yeah. All right. AIDS news? Well, uh, yes, I think we're up to it. Couple of things. First of all, an interesting report from Massachusetts's Department of Health where they have found that they have a very high rate of people with it, living with HIV whose virus is undetectable. 87%. Much higher than the national average. And so they investigated why this might be, why in Massachusetts in particular they were having this success at keeping people undetectable. So they said a couple of things. 
They expanded Medicaid to cover people with HIV in 2001. That was a big help. Yep. Uh, the they passed their uh, health care reform law under Governor Mitt Romney. He doesn't like to talk about that. No. Uh, they expanded equality to uh, affected populations, including same-sex marriage. That The decision there was in 2004. And, uh, you know, it, it remains that the highest rates of HIV infection in, in, untreated in this country are in the Deep South. Yeah. Uh, because they don't have these kinds of uh, equality, support, those kinds of things. Supportive atmosphere, healthier people. Yeah. Nasty atmosphere, less healthy people. And then there's a fascinating story that came out this week, uh, not that much of a surprise, taking us back 30 years to Rock Hudson's death from AIDS in 1985. This was the story at the time that really got AIDS on the front pages of the newspapers around the world. I was working at CBS News at the morning news, and I remember when this hit like a bombshell that Rock Hudson had AIDS. I mean, Rock was looking pretty bad. He was still doing public appearances in movies, and he was just, you know, he just kept telling people he had a cold. So he went to France to try to get treatment and save his life. And actually, his second trip to France, he he had a doctor there who, a French doctor who worked at a French military hospital. Rock went over, he got into the American hospital there, he wanted to get into the mil French military hospital to be treated by his doctor there, and he was having trouble doing that. The government wouldn't, the French government wouldn't let him. They, don't, they didn't take them as inpatients. Right. So one of his people contacted the White House and said, please get Nancy Reagan to talk to the French government and get them to change their mind and let him into this military and hospital. And Nancy turned down the request. Uh, the, she said, oh, we can't get involved in giving special treatment. If we do it for him, we're going to have to do it for her. This is a personal friend of theirs, and I'm sure that they intervened in many other cases. For uh, all sorts for all, of things. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I think they were just afraid of this issue. You know, Nancy was given some credit at the time for like getting a gay on President Reagan's uh, AIDS commission. What was it, 1987? Something like you that. You know, I mean, ridiculous. It took that long, yeah. and then they didn't even have a gay person on it. Right. Because the people inside the White House were like, you know, no, 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 no. We don't want that. We don't care if this is our friends being right. struck by this disease. We're going to stick to the right so way. I this. guess her uh, astrologer did not <laughs> recommend getting involved with Brock. It's bad karma. Nancy's still alive, but she didn't. She didn't remember any of this. <laughs> Well, that's that's the word that's the by line. her spokesman. But this is uncovered by the Washington, D.C. Mattachine Society, which is being run by Charles Francis, who's a big Republican gay and uh, very much an activist. And he and they have started this campaign to go into the archives and start digging out some of this material. And this is one of the stories they have uncovered. So... Congratulations to them for doing that. I see Chris Christie's trying to hide all his files. <laughs> these are public. As, these are people he, who work for us, <laughs> and they they want they want secret files. Well, he doesn't want anyone to know how how much money he has had spent on him for his luxury travel around the world. Right. Okay. In California, uh, certain plans under the state Obamacare uh, exchanges are not covering prep. So Equality California is working on that. And we're watching the Supreme Court for their decision on the latest case against the Obama health care reform plan. It would, it would end a lot of subsidies in states that don't have their own exchanges yeah. if, if, if the right wing succeeds on that. Yep, so. uh, that's being heard March 4th, but it's one of those decisions that's not likely to come out until June, but it can come out any time. You know how they like to cascade these things at the end. It was revealed about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, this, these big trade bills that they're trying to do, that the U.S. and 11 Pacific Rim nations met secretly in New York to make rules to beef up big pharma prices and profits. Nothing new. That's what these things are for. They're not to help you. No, no, no. They're for the profits. In spite of all the work we've done against them and succeeded in beating the back over the years, but they keep coming back. 
All right, entertainment news. Uh, there are a couple movies opening this weekend in New York and L.A. and and eventually other cities around the country that you might want to keep an <clears throat> eye out for. One is a movie called Boy Meets Girl. It's one of these small independent movies. It's about a trans girl in Kentucky and the boy who's her friend, who she really wants to be her boyfriend, and the girl she gets involved with a little, and her soldier boyfriend. And, it, and the actress who plays the trans girl is trans. And, Fancy that. Yeah, amazing. So uh, it's, she's very good, too. And I watched the whole thing online in a preview. And it starts a little slowly, but it becomes interesting and draws you in. The trailer for it is a little jumbled, but we wanted to show it to you to give you a little flavor of it. So here is Boy Meets oh, Girl. God, man. The very thing they will most is the very thing they're most afraid of. Ain't that the truth? Commitment. Dick. I'm not just looking for sex. I want to find love. Maybe I should date girls. I'm a fan. Check one out, see how you like it. See your boyfriend? No, we've been best friends since like first grade. It is clear as day that that boy has a crush on you regardless of what he says. You really shouldn't mess around. There's a fiance, Marines are nuts. Are you a virgin too? Yeah, with girls. It was just one innocent kiss. Sure it won't happen again. Yeah, I'm sure. But um, just in case it should happen again, is it tight like a- Google time. Robbie. Love that bathing suit. Well, I made it actually. That's my real job. I'm a designer. Hopefully, I'll be going to fashion school in New York this fall. Kind of waiting to hear back. I know that you've always thought that she didn't um, totally approve. But that's something you do well to let go of. It's a man below, but a girl up top. If you get my meaning, sir. Stop calling her that. She is a girl. God damn it! Get that your thick skull. She is a girl. This is not for everything. And she has a wedding to prepare for. Did you sleep with her? It's none of your business. Don't you walk away off. from me. No matter what we look like or who we are, we're, we're all just stumbling through life trying to figure it out. Yeah, but you know, unlike me, you all have an us to figure it out with. I was a boy without a clue. I was a boy without you. high school in this town who can survive it i was fat <laughs> i had terrible acne <laughs> and i was a boy so that sucked <laughs> well it certainly doesn't look as wrenching as boys don't cry <laughs> no it's not it's much more benign but it's a nice little sort of semi-rural kentucky story uh it's not your stereotypical big city kind of thing and uh, Michelle Henley there in the pigtails and the plaid shirt is the trans actress playing the role. So someone else who came out of the heartland of course was uh, Matthew Shepard. Uh, we all know about his case, the, the young guy who was murdered back in 1997 so brutally uh, and uh, w uh, w how much do we really know about Matthew Shepard? So uh, one of his friends made a movie called Matt Shepard is a friend of mine. And uh, it really, well, you'll see the trailer. It really sort of turns a lot on home movies, personal stuff, the parents talking at length about him, his brother talking, et cetera, et cetera, right. friends. It's not the politics all over again. It's right. not uh, what do we think of the murderers. It's really about Matt personally. And of course, there's been a lot of controversy about him connected to the trial and sentencing of the murderers and whether it was a drug deal gone bad or whatever. But this is an attempt to take a more personal close-up look at Matt from the eyes of someone who actually grew up with him and knew him. So we have the trailer for that. Matt Shepard is a friend of mine. Opening this week. Matthew Shepard. I don't know how many times in my life I called him Matthew. It's just always been Matt to me. And he was just my friend. 
I can't picture him as an adult. I can't picture him growing up, but that's not the friend I had. Look, there's my brother. He's awesome. Awesome. Nice, nice. My son Matthew did not look like a winner. He was rather uncoordinated and wore braces from the age of 13 until the day he died. What was tied to this fence about a mile outside of Laramie was not a trick, it was real. The battered body of Matthew Shepard, beaten almost to death, barely alive. Matthew's mother said, please tell everybody who's listening to go home, give your, hug, your kids a hug, and don't let a day go by without telling them that you love them. They're very grateful that when they last saw Matthew, his last words to them were, I love you. I am so pissed off. I can't stop crying. One thing must remain clear. Hate and prejudice are not American values. Why did he become the icon? Say hi, Mom. It wasn't because Matt was special. He was very, very special to the people that were close to him. But so has every single person who's been killed. How can it help open people's eyes? The fact that I haven't come to terms with this is the way it is. You don't ever think things like that are going to happen to people that you know or, or that are close to you. I don't think we could even talk about it until now. Matt Shepard is a friend of mine, opening this weekend in New York, also coming to L.A. and cities around the country. Now, perhaps the most anticipated movie opening shortly, and which is getting a big rollout, Fifty Shades of oh. Grey. <laughs> I saw that. I saw a clip this morning. I don't even think the guy's that good looking. But all right. I don't. I don't find either one of them appealing. Nor do I think they have any chemistry. I can't believe this thing is so popular. But it I is. I mean, they were going to use Charlie Hunnam, who was uh, who ran away from it. He ran away from it. He yes, is, uh, he's cute. Well, it's. Uh, but they didn't use him. Yeah, and I just want to mention that uh, a woman I know, Leslie Bennett, who is a very well-known writer, formerly for Vanity Fair and the New York Times, has a big piece in Entertainment Weekly this week just eviscerating this movie and its depiction of female well, sexuality. Well, I think uh, 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 literary critics uh, blasted the book, but it sold 150 million copies or something, didn't it? Exactly, <laughs> but what is that all about? And what well, is it? I, really, it's a romance novel, and that's what people are uh, falling for, is the, is the romance of it. It's not so much that they're... And the, the fact king. that it is sexual, yeah. But uh, Entertainment Weekly, Sex, Lies, and Fifty Shades by Leslie Bennett is uh, a little interesting. Are you done with entertainment news? Well, I got one more. Uh, from the opera world, I don't know if you've heard of the famous countertenor David Daniels. Oh, sure. Out gay man. Uh, very prominent singer. He gave an interview to the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, recently where he was talking about a role that he's playing where he's uh, uh, attacked uh, and abused in the role. And he said, you know, doing this reminded me of when I was really attacked when I was young. And I was in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and these four guys came after me in a strip mall and beat the hell out of me and stripped me of most of my clothes. I ha ended up having to drive myself to the hospital where I got eight stitches. The four attackers were members of the U.S. military <laughs> who had beat this guy silly. And thank you for talking about it, David Daniels. I'm sorry that happened to you. And we have to talk more about these well, things. Well, yes, all very scary. I mean, I, you know, I can remember walking down Christopher Street in Greenwich Village when I was a kid mm -hmm. and uh, a young gay man. What were you man, doing I, there I, as I, a kid? I, I, this was in broad daylight <laughs> on a Saturday. I was, you know, who knows, Christopher Street. Yeah. Sunday, they used to have Sunday promenading there, they basically uh -huh. called it. So it was very popular in those days. You probably wouldn't find it now. But uh, I, I'm walking along and they 
these kids in a car come by and they start shouting faggot at, you know people mm -hmm. uh, and I, I screamed back at I screamed back a very bad word at them mm -hmm. and they circled around the block and they held baseball bats and they said you're a dead man mm -hmm. I ran what am I gonna do five or six Smart. guys yes. with things I ran into the subway I got away but I had I was uh, I had like chest pains after that I mm -hmm. mean you know etc you know you, even if you avoid a beating sometimes it's still very uh, traumatizing and Leslie Bennett's Entertainment Weekly story talks about how women are assaulted multiple times on a daily basis uh, with no repercussions and uh, that we barely even register it. It's such a normal way of life to be uh, assaulted like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Just walking down the street. It's, yes. it's just, uh, come on, f people. Live up to your, you know, your better angels and natures and whatever. All right. Uh, we're hoping that they'll do that. By the way, skipped a couple of stories. Uh, uh, you know, there's a big push now on for the Pennsylvania LGBT rights bill, which has been held up all these years. The governor supports it. 72% of the people in the state say they support it in the polls, but they can't get it through the legislature. Well, so this is what happens when you put Republicans in charge of the legislature. They've got a big shameless, shameless in stopping now, stuff. Now, there's a story in Michigan. A man was fired by Ford the Ford Motor Company, for writing on a feedback form celebrating 20 years of the gay employee group that homosexual behavior, quote, leads to death and that it was immoral and Ford should be ashamed of itself. So, you know, he was fired for, for, for this kind of uh, outburst. Um, he's filing with the EEOC for being discriminated based on his religion. Uh, you know, uh, he's being represented by the right-wing Liberty Institute. But... Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't take bigotry and hide behind religion. Exactly. Well, the governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder, has announced that he will not appeal the court decision mandating that the state recognize the 300 same-sex marriages performed after the uh, Michigan court legalized them and before the Sixth Circuit said no way. So he's a right-wing Republican, but he's Is he getting taking any program. flack? <laughs> It's too soon to tell. I just got this news bulletin. And the other news bulletin is from San Francisco, where Archbishop Cordelione, oh. you remember him? Well, yes. they've put out the new teacher contract for the Catholic schools. Yes. In it, he calls homosexuality gravely evil. Uh, really? You need to mention that in your <laughs> teacher's contract? And then in this contract redefines teachers as ministers and says that they will be judged on their entire lives 24 hours a day they're not allowed to do anything gay supportive certainly or anything else in san francisco san francisco how, how are they supposed to eat <laughs> They would have to eat. They'd have to go to someplace gay. Well, you know, this while. is... And, and what will Pope Francis have to say about this? Uh, who am I to judge? <laughs> when are you going to step in, Francis, and use some of that power that you have? Uh, when he comes here, no doubt. Oh. We will see you next week with updates on all of this. And we'll be protesting when Pope Francis comes, unless yes. he changes his tune. Bye.